गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी शैल रीड अनोदर सोनेट रिटर्न बाय विलियम शेक्सपियर द टाइटल ऑफ दिस सोनेट इज लाइक एज द वेव्स वी हैव डन वेंट टू द सेशंस इन आवर प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स as i explained you about the sonnet in detail and i also discussed went to the sessions in the last lecture in detail so i don't feel any need to explain you again about the sonnet what is sonnet what is the rhyming scheme of sonnet what is the structure of the sonnet you know it's a short poem of 14 lines and it is shakespearean form of sonnet and this sonnet that we are going to study today is the sonnet number 60 as uh, shakespeare has written 154 sonnets in all this sonnet is also referred or addressed to his friend and through poetry through poems the poet is making his friend immortal went to the sessions that was also the poem addressed to the poet's friend and this poem also addresses to his friend so let's go first with the lines then we will have the explanations of those lines like as the waves make towards the pebbled shore so do our minutes hasten to their end each changing place with that which goes before in sequent toil all forwards do content this is the stanza 1 of uh, this poem four lines the beginning four lines in fact in this poem or in this sonnet the poet talks that as the waves of the sea moves towards the shore that is the bank of the sea so every minute the living creatures we the human beings also moves towards our end every living creature moves towards its height and after achieving that height we begin to eclipse we begin to decline so in this way the poet means to say that in this world nothing is immortal and it is time it is time's cruel hands which destroy the youth the beauty and other things as well so we are to decay we are mortal being but here poet through this poem wants to convey that the beauty of his friend the beauty of the poet's friend will not be ruined by the time will not be ruined by the cruel hands of the time because his beauty has been mentioned in these lines and through these lines through the poetry his friend has become immortal so he will live forever in the verses of the poet in the poems in the lines of the poet so this is the gist of this poem now come with the lines like as the waves make towards the pebbled shore like as the waves so as the waves 
moves towards the pebbled shore at the shore of the sea what we see the pebbled the stones are thrown by the sea waves so the the sea waves moves towards the shore pebbled shore continuously in a sequence so as the waves moves towards the sea shore towards the pebbled shore so do our minutes hasten to their end so in the same way our time our minutes our life is also moving hastily towards its end towards death towards the end each changing place with that which goes before so each is changing its place as the waves are changing its place in the same way we human being are also changing our place we we get birth then we become young then we become grown up old and then we come to an end so this is in sequent toil all forward do content so as the waves are continuously in a sequence moving towards their end towards the sea shore in the same way the human beings we people are also moving to our end to our death right so see that here the poet uses a metaphor to compare the progression of time to the movements of the waves so as the time moves in the same way the waves also moves as the time moves we also moves towards the end towards the pebble shore so life is very fast life is moving very fast like the sea waves and we also never have enough time to do everything that we wants to do in this life this life uh, we feel very short we find that this life is very short for us to do everything that we that we want to do so the moments move as the waves do in and out one replacing the next so the efforts that made by uh, the waves together move one's life forward towards its inevitable conclusion so the what is the conclusion and conclusion is inevitable conclusion is that one day we shall die this is the conclusion the death is waiting for us if we have taken the birth upon this earth one day we have to meet with the death and this is inevitable this is true for everyone all right now come to the second stanza nativity once in the main of light crawls to maturity where with being crowned crooked eclipses against his glory fight and time that gave doth now his gift confound so here nativity what is nativity nativity means new born child so when we get birth when we when we are born so nativity again here it has been personified once in the main of light once we are in the main of light in the ocean of light so nativity that is the new born child baby in the ocean of light crawls to maturity moves towards the maturity so the child becomes grown up the child becomes young moves towards the youth where with being crowned and then he becomes young and then he is crowned he is decorated he gets victory 
he is uh, he 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 wins the race and he is awarded but what happens that is being crowned is also eclipsed is also destroyed by the crooked eclipses against his glory fight so his glory is destroyed by the crooked eclipses that is malignant influences of the stars that have governed him since birth so here crooked eclipses the poet is talking about the stars the influence of the stars so the malignant stars which have their influence upon the child from the very beginning they are now moving this child towards the maturity and then then to the then to uh, destroy of his glory that he achieve in his life confound means destroy and time that gave doth now his gift confound so the time is very foul very powerful time which gave him once that glory that appreciation that praise that youth that beauty and now it is the same time which is destroying everything this is destroying what the gifts was given by itself to young baby or to human being so this is what we have the stanza second okay so there are numerous obstacles to that peak that all living being face so we face so many obstacles when we achieve our crest when we achieve our success we have to fight so many things so many obstacles so many difficulties and um, but it's time time destroys everything time takes us to uh, penultimate moments of our life and then it becomes an adversary so time takes its gifts back right now come to the stanza 3 and the last two lines that is called couplet of the sonnet and what are they time doth transfix the flourish set on youth and delves the parallels in beauty's brow feeds on the rarities of nature's truth and nothing stands but for his iskith to mow and yet to times in hope my words shall stain praising thy worth despite his cruel hand so these are the uh, uh, last lines of the sonnet last six lines so stanza 3 and the last two lines a couplet so what the poet means to say here is that time is very powerful it is time which makes us mature it's time which brings popularity appreciation praise to us success to us but it's time which leads us to decay and to death so nothing in this world is a mortal times cruel hands destroy the worldly youth and beauty life at worth and right up to maturity so enjoy the sun sign of happiness so when we get birth then we become mature and in this way we enjoy the sun sign of happiness but very soon thereafter malignant influences of the stars कट ऑफ दैट सनशाइन जैसे सूर्य चमक रहा होता है लेकिन अचानक से एक्लिप्स मानी ग्रहण लग जाता है बदल आ जाते हैं तो सूर्य की जो रोशनी है वो गायब हो जाती है इन द सेम वे हम जो है कि बर्थ करते हैं जन्म लेते हैं मेच्योर होते हैं अचीव करते हैं लेकिन जो टाइम के जो क्रूअल हैंड्स हैं उनके द्वारा तुरंत ही जो है कि हमारे एक्लिप्स आ जाता है अर्थात सब कुछ 
अंधकार में हो जाता है डग जाता है ख़त्म हो जाता है नष्ट हो जाता है सो जो यूथ है ब्यूटी है वो कोई एक टाइम जो फ्लरिश करती है वो समय के द्वारा ही जो है कि नष्ट कर दी जाती है सो टाइम डथ ट्रांसफिक्स द फ्लरिश सेट ऑन यूथ सो द ब्यूटी दैट इज सेट अपॉन द यूथ द ब्यूटी दैट फ्लरिश इन द यूथ इज डिस्ट्रॉयड बाई द टाइम एंड डेल्स द पैरल्स इन ब्यूटीज ब्रो एंड इट इज़ टाइम दैट डिवेलप्स द पैरल्स द रिंकल्स इन द चीक्स और ऑन द फोर हेड ऑन द ब्रो ऑफ द ब्यूटी ऑफ द ऑफ द यूथ्स ब्यूटी ब्यूटिफुल फेस इज ऑल्सो डिक्लाइंड फीड्स ऑन द रेरिटीज ऑफ नेचर्स ट्रूथ सो Time digs wrinkles in the beautiful face, and in this way, time divorces all the choicest things in nature. Feeds on the rarities of the nature's truth. So, whatever the rarities, rare things of the nature's are there, choicest things in the nature are there. They all are devoured by the time. So, nothing succeeds in escaping the destructive forces of time. So, no one can. escapes himself from the from the uh, forceful destructive hands of the time nothing stands but for is iskit uske jo time ko iskit ke sath jo add kiya gaya hai iskit jo aari hoti hai iskit jo ki katari hoti hai kaatne ki usse jo hai ki uske samne koi bhi nahi tik pata hai so the time always having the iskit in its hand is momming is destroying our life our beauty beautiful face our youth and yet two times in hope my words shall stand so in this way here the poet is uh, talking about the times destructive power which destroys everything in this world but in the last two lines he immortalizes his friend's beauty and youth why because his friend's beauty and youth has been has been mentioned in these lines has been written in these lines so here the time will not influence at all and in this way his friend will also be immortal like the poetry of the poet is immortal so and yet two times in hope my verse shall stand so the poet says that his verse his poetry will stand even even in this destructive time so he is proud of that in spite of all the powerful times destructive power his poetry his lines his verse will make his friend immortal and time will not harm any more to him so he says that his verse in praise of his friend will withstand the destructive power of the time that is time won't harm him but his friend will be remembered forever by the future generations that to come so praising thy worth despite his cruel hand despite of the times cruel hand these lines will praise the poet's friend's beauty and youth and in this way he will be immortalized so this is how the poet is uh, immortalizing his friend wh and whom he loved so much and the sonnet is totally absolutely addressed to his beauty and his youth so this is what we have the explanation of this poem uh for today i hope you will enjoy this poem and would be able to understand and try to write a critical note or a critical appreciation of this poem if you have enough time or if you can go with that 
but please go with this poem again and try to understand the meaning or the comprehend the poem so that you will be able to enjoy the literature okay thank you very much see you bye bye